From Studio Series, this is the Transformers 1 Deluxe Class Optimus Prime. Yeah, I am still doing my best to find the proper Transformers 1 Deluxes, but in the meantime, I found the Studio Series boy. You can see here on the front, we have the Optimus Prime look. This isn't how he's been looking in the commercials, because that's Orion Pax. This is probably going to be after he gets the Matrix. Here on the side, we can see it again. On the back, we have him with his Energon Axe. You have the truck mode. Truck mode looks really nice. And apparently, he comes with a little Matrix. So it says here, a hero fulfills his destiny, becoming the legendary Optimus Prime. And then here on the side, it's just Optimus again. A thing I'll point out is, on the render, he has these kind of squinty eyes that I think makes him look like a very nervous young character. The proper Optimus has fully painted blue eyes. Looks great. We'll talk about the figure out of the box. But I do wish we had gotten those kind of squinty eyes instead. Getting Optimus out of the box, there's a couple of pieces we need to add on. Now, we have accessories, we'll go over them later, but in terms of just completing the actual base robot, we have these two gun things. We put them on his shoulders to form the smokestacks. Boop and boop, we have completed the Optimus Prime silhouette. And then you have this really weird looking piece, this is going to be part of the truck mode. Flip it around to the back, and it's supposed to just hook on up here. Doop. There we are. And then lower it back down. Boop, and that gives you your actual Optimus Prime figure as it should be. My first thoughts on Optimus are that he is almost a perfect bang for your buck type of figure. He's massive for a modern deluxe. He's almost as big as a lot of the Voyagers. He comes with a handful of good accessories, decent enough paint on him, good design, but there's a couple of nagging issues. We're gonna go over them. Just know, whereas this figure very easily could have been a slam dunk, it's more like a three-point shot. Just looking at Optimus, his overall proportions are great. I love this more stylized and sleek look for Optimus and the Autobots. That said, it is let down just a bit. Look at our articulation. You do have a good ball joint in the head, and it's on a transformation joint, meaning that you can get a lot up and a lot down. Here in the arms, you have up and down, back and forth, so a universal joint, but you also have a butterfly joint. You have a single jointed elbow with an upper arm cut and a wrist swivel. You might notice I'm having to hang on to the chest as I'm doing that. It's because as you move, it starts to unseat itself. There's tabs here that are supposed to plug into Optimus's torso, but it won't actually snap together, meaning that you can't actually get a complete looking torso. Also, you might just notice I knocked these off. They fall off a lot. These are the guns we just put on the back. Also, the torso isn't just a letdown because of that weird joint and the guns, the diaper gets out of the way a lot. So the diaper is supposed to rest about here, which is exposing like a weird belly button design there. But if you push it up, which you'll be doing it a lot because it's very loose, it occasionally gets stuck and can get in the way of leg articulation. But of course it moves up so that we can make use of a good ball joint that gives us a lot of motion with an upper leg cut, a good deep single knee, and then down here, we have a good ankle rock and a toe joint. So, you have good ideas here, don't get me wrong, but the torso just isn't working. If I could snap this together and it'd be complete, I'm actually going to go for it. I'm just going to see, can I shove it down? Can I shove it down? No, you literally can't shove it down it's because if you did, you would be going in at an angle that those little pegs there couldn't fit into. So you're always going to have an Optimus with a weird gap right there in his midsection that you can kind of hide if you get a little bit clever with your angles. But the fact that it's right there front and center is a bit of a letdown, especially when a big part of this figure, a big part of the reason why I was excited for this figure, was just the fact that it is such a cool new design for Optimus. That said, you can't deny how good this head sculpt is. I know I mentioned earlier that I wish that there were those more narrow eyes because I think they convey a certain type of youth and inexperience, but this is just a wonderful redesign of the Optimus head. You can see there's a little bit more curvature in the ears. They changed the emblem just a little bit. You also might notice that on my copy there is a little bit of mist paint. You have the gray going over here just a bit too much, but that doesn't change the fact that I really love this head sculpt for Optimus. It really reminds me of a lot of the IDW designs for Optimus's head. The other part of it is the fact that you have a very tiny matrix of leadership. Now, it is made entirely out of clear plastic, but it is a very nice looking accessory. And if we flip up the chest, 
there is a matrix chamber and we can put it right there. That's so cool. You know, we're getting to a point where Optimus Primes, it's pretty normal for them to come with matrixes. I'm still from the mindset where that happened like once or twice every like 10 years. And I don't know if we've ever had a deluxe that had a matrix that it could hold. So this is really awesome. I like that. Still talking about the Matrix, let's just talk about accessories in general. So the Matrix, if you don't want it in the chamber, right? You have these pegs here, and you have slots within the knuckles of Optimus. So you can kind of, sort of, make it look like he's holding the Matrix with both hands. As you can see, the torso does not want to play ball, and neither do the arms really, but he can do it if you wrestle it enough. Ah, uh, come on, come on. It's all about finding the right angle to get this at. Ah, every time you get in one, it comes out the other. There, that's as close as I'm gonna get. Um, it looks like a little kid trying to hide the fact that they broke the vase. It looks like they're trying to shove it back together or some mom might not notice. Um, I'm not big on that. I think it's cool enough that the Matrix can go into the chest. I think it's cool that they tried to make it work with like a Matrix opening gimmick. It's, it's just not going the way I think anyone would want it to. That said, the other accessory works so much better. You have this Energon Axe. Now, Energon Axes, we get them with a lot of primes nowadays. I do enjoy that this one is at least blue and has a bit of a different design. Alongside that, you can see we have a peg here. It can go right over Optimus's hands and boom, makes it look like we have replaced the hand and now we can get a couple of cool poses with it. Even though the torso does get in the way a bit, you can get some halfway decent poses out of this Prime, especially when you have that Energon Axe. It helps that his lower body is so well articulated that it's almost too easy to keep him balanced. I just wish that the arms had a little bit more natural flow to them, and of course that the chest was a bit easier to make use of, because if those things worked together, this could have been an amazing Prime to pose. For anyone curious, here he is with the 2007 movie Optimus from Studio Series. And again, you can see what I'm talking about. This is not a Voyager figure, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot more than a deluxe. You can see he's pretty close in terms of height and definitely in terms of density and just overall weight. I think that you could look at this Optimus and justifiably say he is a massive bang for your buck proposition. Here he is with the Bumblebee movie Studio Series Optimus and I'll say it, I still love this design. I really prefer this for a redo of the G1 Optimus as done by the movies. Him alongside the Rise the Beast mainline Optimus, one of the most underrated Optimus Primes of the last few years. I honestly think he looks really nice alongside the Earthrise Optimus. I don't know why, but there's a very weird synergy between these two. And then for my own amusement, here he is alongside the animated Cybertron Optimus. Putting this Optimus alongside so many other Primes, and especially playing more with his articulation, this is a really solid Optimus that is let down by a couple of very minor issues. But I'm having a ton of fun with him in robot mode. I'm just curious how the vehicle mode's gonna wind up. The truck mode is unique. I'll give it that much. Let's give the devil his due. It is a very nice looking truck. I like just how smooth and curvy it is. Very, very nice, love it. That said, um, those are very clearly arms and those are very clearly legs. Uh, the transformation, it, it has clever points to it, right? Especially the torso and the back, very similar to the Earthrise Optimus over here. But here in the back, the legs kind of just give up. Alongside that, you can see the way this is supposed to work is hands grab onto handles, arms like plug into thighs, and shoulders plug into the back, which is what's forming the front of the truck. I can't get that to work on this side. I don't know why. It just it doesn't all plug together all that easily for me. It's probably just an issue with mine. That said, I do like the truck. The truck is fine. It's just I think it maybe could have been a little bit more of a transformation, then again, I feel like a lot of the budget here really did go into the robot mode. Uh, alongside that, this is just the piece from the back that we put in earlier. Total parts forming, there's nothing it can do in the transformation. If you want to see what it looks like without this, here, it does plug in tightly, which is a shame because every time you're going to want to transform this guy, it has to come back out. Ah, there we go. 
Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, this is going to break one day. It might be breaking right now. Oh, my God. Come on. Oh, come on. This is the first time I've transformed this thing and it's stuck. <sighs> That's never going back in. That's never going back in. Um, here's what the truck looks like without it. Um, yeah, it's it's rougher, but really it just sucks that that's like a it's parts forming that's also impossible to take out it's the worst of both worlds it's terrible but overall like without it i think the truck still looks fine it's just kind of like the robot mode good design good idea just a few annoyances along the way do you know what this optimus prime reminds me of do you remember when the bumblebee movie came out and we got bumblebee dropkick and shatter and they were all really rough and didn't really look like the movie. But then a few years later, we got Off-Road, Bumblebee, Jet Shatter, and Car Dropkick, and they were great. I feel like that's what's happened here. Hasbro is working with concept art, design drawings. Maybe not everything was thought out as well as it could be because they were trying to get this guy out before the movie. And as a result, there's probably going to be a better studio series Transformers 1 Optimus down the line. But the other part of it is... That mainline Optimus, the Prime Changer one, I'm really thinking is going to blow me out of the water more than this guy did. That's who I'm looking for. I wasn't looking for this one. I'm looking for that mainline, the one put out by the quote-unquote B team, the the um the LA design team. I think they're going to make some really cool Transformers for TF1, and Studio Series will too, eventually. And this Optimus, he's a good starting point but he's definitely not going to be the main event.